Episode 12, The First Bite, E3 2021 Spectacular. Through all of the things that the world has had to endure over the course of the last year, it was the dissolution of our traditional and annual events that made things feel more desperate. Major conventions and calendar fillers were struck off the table, and many people were left reeling for some normalcy. In the world of gaming, the largest of those perpetuations of regularity is the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3. Companies and game makers the world over usually gather in Los Angeles, where the entire industry is watching to get a glimpse of the works in progress. Every single year, minus a few times where the show didn't happen, this is the one week of the year that actually feels like Gamer Christmas. Each of the major console manufacturers and a handful of the world's largest publishers and developers even go beyond the show floor attendance and host their own showcases. These are generally designed to engage an audience they already have and does far more to make promises of exciting times ahead for their stakeholders. Rather than allowing another year to go by without a proper E3, Although, Jeff Keighley has done a fantastic job bringing these folks together without the banner of the show, an all-digital version was presented to the gaming world this year. With an astounding opening night showcase, hosted by Keighley himself, followed by a weekend of turbulence and relentlessness and tangible anticipation, every major group, aside from PlayStation, brought their pitch deck and trailers for a rousing weekend of jaw-dropping reveals, reorders flying off the shelves, and a slew of inaudibly high-pitched squealing from behind computer monitors. As this is the first year that both E3 and this podcast are happening at the same time, I thought it would be fun and maybe slightly frantic to pick five titles out of the entire lineup of announcements that tickled my fancy. For briefness and brevity, I will dip into what makes me so excited about these games, their announcements, and perhaps a little more at the very end. Welcome to the first annual First Bite E3 Extravaganza. I am Wyatt Fawcett, and this is the First Bite. And I say first a lot in that sentence. Number 5. The Outer Worlds 2 The Outer Worlds game, from the minds and makers behind Fallout New Vegas, which is inarguably one of the best Fallout games ever made, was a critical success. However, there were many doubts about the financial turnout of that grade. At the very least, it did well enough to give Obsidian the opportunity to make a second one. Revealed as part of the Xbox and Bethesda press conference on Sunday, the Outer Worlds 2 looks to continue the absolutely phenomenal level of cheekiness seen in the original. This space-bound role-playing game set a new bar for visuals two years ago, and it was only dwarfed, that's a planetary science joke for you, by the masterclass in storytelling that Obsidian continues to put on display with all of their franchises. Now, standing on their own, and given the chance to forge their own franchises, The Outer Worlds may have been destructive in its name, because another game that won a bunch of artistic achievement awards called The Outer Wilds came out within the same time frame, but it firmly cemented Obsidian in the annals of history as a true talent house. Little is known about the sequel to 2019's Nebula Award winner, but the hilarious reveal trailer goes out of its way to ensure you, the fan, knows that the writers and designers aren't skipping a beat when it comes to their layered comedy, industry critique, and of course, beautiful sci-fi vistas. I've played many hours of the original, and though I have yet to complete it, it was widely considered one of the best games to be released in its year. Something built upon by more than a few stellar pieces of DLC content post-launch. I look forward to Outer Worlds 2, and I'm really glad the Obsidian is getting the chance to continue this franchise. Number 4. Halo Infinite Multiplayer 
To say that Halo has played a big role in my gaming experience throughout my life would be a rather hefty understatement. Aside from classics like StarCraft and Dungeons and Dragons, the Halo series was my first major inundation with multiplayer. And it spawned numerous nights of televisions being hauled across town, culminating in a roaring PvP event in my basement. Many of those that sat around the displays those nights are still the mainstay of my gaming friends roster today, and it has been a pleasure. Fun, frantic, frolicking, and friends are all the ingredients to substantial gatherings in my multiplayer endeavors, Halo being the linchpin of those stories for the most part. In 2020, we were supposed to get Halo Infinite. However, after a poor showing in the early portion of the year, and some changes that obviously needed to be made, the game was delayed an entire calendar and split into two parts. For the first time in history, Halo Multiplayer and Halo Story Campaign will be packaged separately. Going free to play for PC and Xbox users was cited as one of the main reasons the entire experience was delayed to begin with. They needed to get this right. The cinematic trailer for Halo Infinite Multiplayer was revealed during the Xbox Showcase on Sunday and it was pretty hype. However, it was the more in-depth trailer released the next morning that truly gave gamers an inside look at some of the new modifications and changes coming to Halo in this latest release, which is currently scheduled for the holiday 2021 season. According to the list of assets and additions, the team behind the new Halo game aren't going too far left or too far right of the foul line. They understand the game they're playing, or in this case, the game that they're making. So, they have to play by some semblance of the rules. Regardless of Halo Infinite being more Halo, the excitement to get back on the field with my small group of gaming friends and family means that I'm in for a rambunctious time this Christmas. And that's just a fact. Number 3. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 If you know me, you may be shocked to find out that the sequel to my favorite game ever made is only number three on this list of E3 announcements. But let me tell you why. It's because I knew it was coming. And no matter what the game winds up being, I'm going to be there for it. Front to back, the first Breath of the Wild game was, by quite a large margin, the most extensively wonderful gaming experience I have ever had. Take out my lifelong fandom of the Legend of Zelda series and remove any distinct adorations I have for exploration and open world games, and Breath of the Wild would still be the greatest game I have ever played. Period. If I could erase a portion of my memory and replay a game for the first time all over again, it would be Breath of the Wild. That magical feeling running around in that universe for the first time. It goes unchallenged and I still play it once a month or so, exploring and enjoying the world they have built. This is precisely why I put the new trailer and info for Breath of the Wild 2 right in the middle slot on this list. No matter what Nintendo showed, my own hype was never going to be added upon. Though this new trailer did tease some mystical powers, platforms, and cities in the sky, as well as continuing that bit of spooky slant that was revealed in the original teaser trailer for Breath of the Wild 2, which we saw two years ago. Since then, Nintendo has been mum on the game, finally providing a second look this past E3. And I'm going to be there for it. Number 2. Starfield Oh, if Breath of the Wild is number 3 on the list, that means two games have gone above it. The first of those two is Starfield from Bethesda. It's also the second Fallout connection on this list, which should go pretty far in explaining my love for the post-apocalyptic role-playing game franchise. Starfield, on paper, was announced a few years back, and, on paper, it ticks a ton of boxes for me. However, back when it was revealed as a name and logo on the E3 stage of previous years, it didn't ping my excitement all too much. But now, in 2021, I've put more than 300 hours into Elite Dangerous, and I've found myself extremely addicted to the idea of playing space-based RPGs. Hence, the anticipation I shared earlier regarding The Outer Worlds 2, my review and adoration for the Mass Effect franchise, and how I'm never going to stop talking about space now. 
With the pedigree and talent at Bethesda for telling rich stories and universes absolutely trenched with all of the nitty gritty details that truly turn my knobs, I know that Starfield, which has been touted by Bethesda as their largest game to date, will be truly exceptional, if only just for me. During this Xbox presentation at E3, we got a teaser trailer. Lush, with little particulars, giving us our first look at the atmosphere and feeling that Starfield will provide. And I'm incredibly stoked to jump in. If you have any inclination to adore games like The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Wolfenstein, Prey, The Evil Within, or Dishonored, then you have some faith that Starfield is going to go above and beyond to cement itself in the halls of history. Also, can we just take a second to look back at that list of franchises that Bethesda is a part of? That's an incredible resume. Take me to space, Bethesda. I, for one, cannot wait to sit down in this universe, find a seat on that bridge, and explore what Bethesda has to offer when it comes to sci-fi role-playing. Within the teaser trailer, a November 11, 2022 release date was teased. Speaking of release dates, here's one that probably won't stick. Number 1. Elden Ring Thursday, June 10th, 2021 will forever go down in gaming history, maybe just my gaming history, as the day that the legendary From Software finally gave the human race the gift it deserved which was the full reveal and gameplay sequences from Elden Ring. Acclaimed developers behind the ever-popular and brutally exhilarating Souls series, which includes Demon Souls, three Dark Souls games, and Bloodborne, are bringing a real evolution to their library. They are known for their difficult and punished to educate design, but I would be lying if I didn't say that those things are only part of the reason why I love the Souls world. Namely, Souls allows players to tinker and tweak RPG elements to suit a variety of playstyles. But even those selling points pale in comparison to the world building and the buffet of lore that isn't handed to you. Souls is the first time I've ever been truly asked to do homework. The developers and creators of this franchise provide the stones, but the players, they have to build the house. And that has made all of it stick far longer than any other video game or entertainment franchise I have ever played or watched. Elden Ring looks to take the fantastic and masochistic lessons they've learned along the road and mash it into a gigantic open world, co-created by Souls mastermind Miyazaki-san alongside iconic fantasy author George R.R. R. Martin. I will refrain from going over the full reveal trailer here in this show, which let me tell you, is a large feat for me to hold back. But know that I have never got the kind of goosebumps that the Elden Ring trailer served up last week. It has been a long time coming, and COVID-19 has had a major impact on many products over the course of the previous year. But we finally got to see what Elden Ring is going to attempt to give us, and it looks to be living on an otherworldly level of detail and promise. At the end of the first look of Elden Ring, there was a release date, which, at the time of recording this podcast, was still listed as January of next year. That's seven months from now. Following years of complete silence on the side of FromSoft, you will hopefully appreciate my skepticism regarding the quote-unquote strict release date at the end of this trailer. Regardless, I couldn't be more excited to play another Souls game for the first time as it is one of the greatest experiences in gaming. And there's just nothing like jumping into one of these games with fresh eyes and palpable excitement. And that's my list. Those are the top five announcements, trailers, whatever you want to call them, that were revealed at E3 2021. And I've got one more thing for you. As you know, I'm a huge proponent of indie games. I think that they provide an avenue of amazing storytelling, artistic integrity, and voices that can't be heard in other genres or at larger scales. So, in addition to the traditional E3 showcase events, the second annual Wholesome Direct returns during the E3 window this year, and it brought with it another large list of indie games worthy of our attention. 
Here is a very speedy rundown of all the games from the Wholesome Direct and beyond that caught my eye. Welcome to the list within a list. This is the indie game extravaganza. Bear and Breakfast is a fun and friendly game about a bear repairing and controlling a bed and breakfast. I don't need to say more. Dordogne is an experience where a magical girl relives memories handed down from her parents through exploration and hand-painted atmospheres and photographing the flora and fauna. I will take any photographing game, especially one that looks this beautiful. Lake is a game that I've already put some time into and have to say is an astounding experience. Taking over the reins from her father, a woman goes back to her small town to become the community's mail delivery driver. You meet people, deliver packages, and take it easy next to the lake. We Are OFK comes from the mind that brought us the world of Hyperlight Drifter, and the game tells the story of an electronic band. Lush with gorgeous art, wondrous stories, and emotions, and let me tell you, this game is going to be exciting on all strings, and I just can't wait. Moonglow Bay is the delightful fishing simulator game that the world deserves. The art is stunning and voxel, and I can't wait to spend time on these waters. The Garden Path is another game that, speaking of art, is one of the freshest and most beautiful looking on this list. And players get the joy of bringing this garden back to its lush life. Replaced is an extremely stylized and fervent side-scrolling action game set in this dystopian noir Blade Runner type world. And it looks to be pretty exciting. Sable, which is a low-poly, apocalypse-adjacent open-world role-playing game, has an outstanding level of polish and art, and it is a game I've been following for some years. Somerville caught me by surprise with its spooky and possibly ethereal tale of a family struggle and heartbreak, all wrapped up in, again, gorgeous art and style. Think of it as part inside part Kentucky Route Zero. And finally, Book of Travels. I almost put Book of Travels on my full list. It was going to be number five. There are a few games on Earth I am looking forward to at an equal level. Book of Travels brings social and open world traveling to probably the prettiest video game I have ever seen. Interaction with other players is up to you and it's dumbed down into a situation where you can't form parties and there's no voice chat. I don't know how we're going to get conversations across yet, but I am greatly anticipating getting to discover what this game has to offer. It seems clear that the water cooler moments in Book of Travels will be on the tongues of indie fans and gamers the world over for some time. Thank you so much for tuning in to the first ever E3 extravaganza from me, Wyatt Fawcett. You can find me at Wyatt Fawcett on Twitter. I appreciate everyone that follows Legends as a content brand and headline. And anyone who's subscribed to the First Byte podcast, where I talk about my first impressions or overall impressions about the biggest and best and my favorite in the video game industry. I really love the games of all scale, and I really wanted to give a shout out to some of the more exciting looking and games I'm anticipating from indie developers. So that list at the end, um, I'm going to put a full list of links to wish list pages on Steam so that you guys can keep track of when these games are coming out and how they're looking. And, and I have a tweet up with a list of a bunch of games from the Wholesome Direct and Indie Showcase that I'm excited for. And I will link to that tweet also in the description of this episode and on our YouTube. Again, I appreciate being given the opportunity to do this show every week for you guys and hearing from you on social media and in emails and and in DMs is just a fantastic way to connect with my friends and my family and people that love the same things that I love. And I think that's really the quintessential ingredient to the gaming industry is how we connect over our shared mutual adoration for these experiences. I hope that I will 
see you guys next week and i look forward to talking to you all on social media i hope you guys enjoyed e3 let me know what your favorite announcement or reveal was from the show and we'll discuss it we'll catch you next week